The Tudor's Dynasty Podcast. Born around 1519, Mary Howard was the daughter of Thomas Howard, Earl of Surrey, later Third Duke of Norfolk, and his second wife, Lady Elizabeth Stafford. Not only was Mary born into the well-established Howard family, but her mother, a Stafford, was the daughter of Edward Stafford, Third Duke of Buckingham. The Duke was executed in 1521, when Mary was two years old, under the reign of Henry VIII. Mary was the only daughter of Thomas and Elizabeth Howard, and received an education that was appropriate to her birth. Since Mary's father was Thomas Howard, her first cousin was also Anne Boleyn. Anne's mother and Thomas Howard were siblings, and this familial connection led to a proposed marriage between Mary and the king's illegitimate, yet recognized son, Henry Fitzroy. While many have said that the marriage was Norfolk's niece Anne Boleyn's idea, it had been maintained by Norfolk that it was the idea of the king. However, the marriage between Fitzroy and Mary Howard had likely been promoted by Anne to help strengthen her ties to the throne. And really, who could blame her? This was the game that had to be played at Tudor court. Like the later marriage of Henry VIII and Anne of Cleves, there was no dowry expected with this marriage, which actually was unusual for the time. This could also indicate the influence that Anne Boleyn had over the king. Mary Howard's mother, Elizabeth, was totally against the marriage. Whether she blamed Anne Boleyn for the breakdown of her own marriage, that's a story for another time, or was disgusted with the amount of control that she had in the negotiations, Elizabeth was not happy and made it known. This eventually led to Elizabeth Howard being banished from court. When King Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn went to Calais in October 1532, they brought with them Henry Fitzroy, Mary Howard, and Mary's brother, Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey. Fitzroy and Surrey both stayed in France after Henry and Anne's departure. Fitzroy was a member of King Francis I's privy chamber, and Surrey was also a member of his entourage. While Fitzroy and Surrey were away in France, Anne Boleyn and King Henry VIII were married. Anne was now queen, and Mary Howard was one of her ladies-in-waiting. The young men, Fitzroy and Henry Howard, were called back to England in August of 1533, and three months later, Henry Fitzroy and Mary Howard were married at Hampton Court Palace. She was 14, and he was 15 years old. Because of their youth, the couple was not allowed to live together. Instead, they went back to their respective homes. Sadly, Mary and Fitzroy would never live together, and their marriage would be short-lived. In July 1536, Henry Fitzroy, Duke of Richmond and Somerset, an only surviving recognized male child of Henry VIII, died. Since the marriage had not been consummated, King Henry VIII denied his young widowed daughter-in-law the vast estates she should have inherited as the widow of the Duke of Richmond and Somerset. Mary, still young, could not remarry until her jointure was settled. King Henry decided to keep it all for himself instead. Because of the king's greed, Mary was forced to live off the handouts of her father, the Duke of Norfolk, and to sell her jewels to have money to live on. Expecting her powerful father to help her with his connection to the king, Mary was very disappointed by his efforts and threatened to confront the king in person. This matter of Mary's jointure was actually not resolved until 1540, after the dissolution of the monasteries. Mary finally received some property and income to live on. Around the same time that Mary was fighting for what was rightfully hers, she was helping Margaret Douglas in her clandestine love affair with her uncle, Lord Thomas Howard. In our A Brief History episode on Margaret Douglas, we delve a little deeper into that story, if you want to know more. It's possible that Mary acted as a sort of lookout for the two lovebirds in their clandestine meetings, but all that came to an end when the king discovered that the couple had a pre-contract to marry. Both Thomas Howard and Margaret were sent to the tower, 
And Mary was saved because the couple insisted that she never knew of the pre-contract. In the meantime, circa 1538, Mary was being linked with Thomas Seymour for a possible marriage alliance. If she accepted this proposal, she would not get what she had been working so hard for. Mary was not interested in marrying Seymour. It was merely her father's way of creating ties to the throne. The relationship between the Seymours and the Howards is an interesting one. There are reports that in 1537, Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey, was imprisoned at Windsor Castle because he punched Edward Seymour in the face. The reason? Well, I guess Seymour suggested that Surrey favored the rebels in the Pilgrimage of Grace. And uh, that's all it took. <laughs> Surrey wasn't imprisoned very long. But later on, possibly when Henry VIII's health had already begun to fade, the Howard men saw the Seymours, and especially Thomas, who was single, as their way to be the closest to the throne as possible. As uncle of little Prince Edward, future Edward VI, having their daughter married into the family to Thomas Seymour would greatly impact the Howard men's influence at court. What about Mary and the Queens? Well, when Anne of Cleves became queen, it was thought that Mary would have a place in her household. However, Anne had brought her own ladies and did not have room for her at the time. Then Mary's cousin, Catherine Howard, well, when she became queen, made Mary a lady of the privy chamber under the supervision of, get this, Margaret Douglas. After the execution of Catherine Howard, the Howard clan was once again lacking favor with the king. Both Mary Howard and Margaret Douglas were sent away from court for 17 months. Then again in 1546, Norfolk discussed the marriage of his daughter to Thomas Seymour. Around this time, he had also proposed a few marriages to further bind the Howard and Seymour families. In addition to the proposed union of his daughter to Thomas Seymour, he also negotiated some of his grandchildren as matches for three of Edward Seymour's children. On the 10th of June, 1546, Henry VIII gave his permission and approval to this proposal. But then something went wrong. Once again, Mary was not interested in marrying Thomas Seymour. She discussed this problem with her brother, the Earl of Surrey, who suggested she discuss it with the king and use her charms to become his mistress. Now, this would help in advancing not only her interests, but that of the Howards as well. Mary was insulted and disgusted by her brother's plan, and she said she would rather cut her own throat than go along with it. Mary and Henry Howard's relationship would never be the same and this would mark the beginning of Surrey's downfall. When her father and brother were arrested in December 1546, Mary did nothing to save them. She even gave testimony against her brother. Mary told the council that her brother had such a distaste for men who were, quote, made and not of noble birth. And he said, if God called away the king, that they should smart for it. She went on to tell the council that he replaced the coronet with a crown on his coat of arms. When Surrey's home was searched, they found more evidence against him, a plate with the arms of Edward the Confessor, even though the only person in the kingdom who could claim that was the king. She also told them about the conversation her brother had with her about becoming the king's mistress. Both her father and brother were charged with treason and sentenced to death. Only her brother would make it to the block, because 11 days later, King Henry VIII was dead. Norfolk's sentence was halted, and he remained in prison until the reign of Queen Mary. Now, in the end, Mary raised her brother's children after his execution, and was granted money by Edward VI for doing so. He said that he knew of no finer place for the children to be educated. The date of death varies for Mary Howard. What I do know is she most likely died in December. It's the year that really varies. Some reports say 1555, others 1556 or 57. 
In her three decades of life, Mary Howard witnessed a lot of drama at Tudor Court, especially during the reign of her father-in-law. But Mary Howard most definitely should be remembered as a strong woman who fought for what was right and what was hers. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of A Brief History. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe wherever you listen. By subscribing, you'll just be notified that a new episode has been released. Also, if you like this, make sure to give it a like, a share, or a love. By doing so, you help other Tudor lovers find my podcast. And if you're interested in a commercial-free experience, head on over to Patreon. There'll be a link in the show notes to guide you. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Tudor's Dynasty podcast. You can follow and support the Tudor's Dynasty podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon at Tudor's Dynasty.